As soon as the embarrassed little girl entered the courtroom, everyone paid close attention, fearing the judge would ask the pivotal question. Amy walked up to him, after losing custody of his daughter not long ago. Her adoptive father was looking for a new chance to adopt her. The girl started crying the moment she laid eyes on the man. After she composed herself, the judge asked the question. Everyone at the hearing felt a lump in their throat when she responded. As a result of what they had witnessed, the witnesses were profoundly affected and believed that their lives would be changed forever. Thomas Clark, who owned a network of home appliance stores in the area, first met Helen, a student of 18 years old, at a modern art show. Their love for one another blossomed rapidly when he felt an instant attraction to her. Thomas, who was 33 years old at the time, was thinking about getting married and having a family. They were able to overcome their parents' condemnation of their relationship and get closer to their wedding day as their love blossomed. Despite his mother's repeated warnings that Helen was just after his money, Thomas remained steadfast in his belief that Helen's feelings for him were sincere. After relocating to a new home, the newlyweds went on a honeymoon to Mexico. Thomas thought he had discovered the key to eternal joy. His belief that he had chosen well was strengthened with each passing day. Thomas, after a happy year of marriage, finally proposed the notion of starting a family, something he had wanted since he was a young man. He was taken aback when Helen expressed her lack of enthusiasm for the idea. She felt unprepared to become a mother at the tender age of 19. Thomas persisted, and after much convincing, Helen finally accepted, even though she was hesitant at first. However, after some time had passed with no success in conceiving, Thomas suggested they see a doctor at a local clinic. They got some bad news at their checkups. Thomas's cancer was the reason Helen couldn't get pregnant. Thomas was deeply affected by the devastating prognosis, which ushered in a period of immense personal difficulty for him. Unfortunately, it was at this trying time that Helen revealed her actual self. Her apparent indifference to her husband's condition and lack of compassion for him was evident. She ignored him preferring to spend her time shopping and hanging out with friends rather than providing him with support and help. Thomas eventually conquered the cancer thanks to the efforts of the medical team and the knowledge of the physician. Sadly, the sickness prevented him from ever becoming a father. Thomas struggled inside with the deep consequences of these incidents. Helen was relieved that she didn't have to devote her time, resources, or youth to raising children. Helen saw that Thomas was surprised by his wife's behavior and that melancholy had rapidly crept into his face. Helen softened her tone and said, Well, if you really want children, you can adopt from an orphanage. Still, she wasn't interested in starting a family in the deep end. Adoption appealed to Thomas as a workable answer. He made the decision to visit the city's adoption facility, despite his expectation that it would not be as emotionally rewarding as having a biological child. Thomas met little Amy there. The girl looked like an angel, but she was always depressed. She had not spoken since arriving at the center a few weeks prior. Thomas became silent as tears filled his eyes upon hearing about her past. Amy came from a difficult upbringing where she was forced to beg on the streets by her unsuitable and jobless biological parents. She had become quiet and reclusive due to the hardships in her life. After hearing Amy's story, Thomas was moved to tears and started seeing her practically daily. The workers at the facility didn't think he would adopt a child with such serious problems at first. Thomas, however, stayed faithful. Thomas gained the respect of the orphanage workers in, in due time, Amy's trust. He devoted a great deal of time each day to conversing with her, accompanying her to the playground, and showering her with presents. Amy started to loosen up and engage with other kids more, treating them like equals, so clearly this unique strategy was effective. As their relationship deepened, Thomas started to think of Amy as his own daughter. Thomas was finally able to bring Amy home after he had fulfilled all the necessary paperwork and received the necessary approvals. Making his dream of fatherhood a reality, Thomas felt the happiness of motherhood the minute he welcomed Amy into his life. To make sure Amy was safe and comfortable, he did everything he could. Sadly, Thomas's wife Helen did not feel the same way about Amy and did not share his happiness. 
Helen pretended to enjoy the girl at first, but her jealousy and anger intensified when she watched Thomas lavish attention on Amy. Additionally, Helen was worried that Amy may put her claim to Thomas's assets at risk if the subject of a divorce came up. Thomas and Helen began to argue frequently. With Helen frequently accusing Thomas of ignoring her and changing since they welcomed Amy into their family. Thomas disagreed with her and made it plain that they might divorce if Helen didn't change her attitude. While quietly plotting her vengeance, Helen feigned to relax. She crept into Amy's room one night and tried to stuff a pillow down her throat. Amy, thankfully, awoke just in the nick of time and started to wailing and screaming. Thomas burst into the room just in time to see his wife holding Amy's pillow when she stood beside her bed. Tell me what you're up to. Is this true? In utter horror at Helen's behavior, Thomas yelled out. So, Helen swung into action yelling out loud in the hopes that the neighbors would hear her and contact the authorities. After her plot was hatched, Helen falsely accused Thomas of assaulting Amy when the authorities showed around. This led to the swift revocation of the couple's custody rights and Thomas's transport to the local police station. Luckily, Amy had been quite uneasy after her stay at the orphanage, so Helen was unaware that Thomas had placed a camera in her room to watch over her after she first arrived. The camera's footage established Thomas's innocence and served as supporting documentation in Helen's criminal case. Even though justice was done, Thomas was no longer able to keep Amy. The distraught father would spend his nights sobbing in private in the chamber of his adopted daughter. Thomas continued to visit the court during this time, attempting to revive his adoption case. His endeavors were ineffective at first. And then, when he had given up hope, he saw that his case was going to be examined. Thomas felt as like this was the most important day of his life. And the anxiety peaked when Amy was asked to enter the courtroom by the judge. Tell me, is this your father? The judge questioned. Pointing to Thomas, Amy immediately broke down in tears at hearing the question. Following a little period of quiet, Amy answered, No, this isn't my father. A soft whisper swept across the courtroom. Well, do you want to go back to your adoptive father? The court then questioned. Although Amy didn't say anything for a brief while, everyone could tell what choice she was going to make. This is my guardian angel who protected me and cared for me like his own daughter, Amy remarked. Wiping her tears with a handkerchief, even though he isn't my biological father, I adore him and think of him as such. I want to spend more time with you. When I lived with him, I was never happier. The response to Amy's remarks was intense. Everyone present in the courtroom, including the judge, the aides, and the attendees, broke down in tears. They were able to watch a real family drama play out in front of them and were emotionally invested in it. Thomas hurried over to Amy as soon as she was done talking and helped her up. Thomas arrived home that evening with his cherished daughter, eager to start a long and happy life together. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. While fighting off a panic attack, Jody woke up in the middle of the night. Her parents' deaths in a car crash a year earlier continued to resurface in her dreams. Living in her parents' former home, Jody was just 16 years old. Ten years ago, the Garcia family uprooted their lives from Arkansas and settled in New Jersey. With their meager means, they purchased a dilapidated house on the outskirts of town. The Garcia family had put off fixing the property until they had more money and hoped their situation would improve. Tragically, Jody was left with nothing save the small savings that her parents had saved up. When they were never able to realize her ambitions, Jody chose to conceal the fact that she was now completely alone since she was averse to being placed in an institution or assigned a guardian. At first, she lived off of her parents' savings, but she soon realized that she needed to get a job. Jody started looking without hesitation. Although she had a hard time finding work, she struck it rich when she found the wallet of an old restaurant owner on the stairs of his business. She promptly returned it to him, demonstrating her impeccable manners. Young lady, I must say, I have never witnessed such forthrightness before, remarked food establishment owner Howard Butler. You said you're trying to get a job, I believe I have something to give you if you aren't scared of cooking. 
Seeing the offer as a great chance, Jody gladly accepted. From an early age, Jody had a knack for the kitchen and had grown to love her job as a dishwasher. The child, who had lost her parents, was able to secure employment because of Mr. Butler's generosity. She won over her co-workers with her sincere and hard effort. A year after receiving her first paycheck, Jody was still residing in the home she had inherited from her parents. When Jody was on her way to work one morning, she saw that the neighbor's door was ajar. She decided to stop by and say hello to the new renters when she knew they had just moved in. Stepping inside with caution, she was met with the pungent aroma of charred food. As she made her way into the kitchen, she noticed a young man agitating a substance in a saucepan over the heat. A little blonde girl with knotty pigtails sat at the table. She was probably around five years old. Hi, lady, the girl greeted Jody, who was visibly embarrassed. Hello, I happen to be your neighbor, Jody responded while maintaining her composure. The boy at the stove turned around at that very moment and smiled warmly at Jody. It's good to meet you. This is my sister Betty. My name is Albert, he added, taking the scorched oatmeal off the fire. There was no additional food in the house, as evidenced by the minimally designed kitchen. Betty moved her hands over her plate and said, We're going to feed Mama now so we can go play. She's sick and can't eat by herself. This information surprised Jody because she had assumed the house was vacant save for the kids. With some spare time on her hands, Jody said her goodbyes to Betty and Albert and went to work. Everyone was happy because it was the restaurant staff's payday that day. Mr. Butler gave Jody an envelope at the end of the day that was far larger than her pay. He only grinned as the girl gave him a startled expression. Mr. Butler remarked, a hint of melancholy in his voice. Take it, you bring back so many memories of my Amy in her early years. I'm 64 years old, and she must be older now. He brushed away a tear and told Jody a story he'd told the wait staff at the restaurant. Howard Butler and his daughter Amy had a falling out many years ago. And Amy took her untrustworthy fiancé and fled to the country in a frenzy of vengeance. She has not spoken to anyone since then. Mr. Butler had hoped she would come back on her own. But his pride kept him from going looking for her. Like her father, Amy wasn't interested in being the first to make amends. As a result, Howard Butler missed his daughter terribly and lived a life of silent sadness. Jody went straight to the grocery store after getting her paycheck and filled a big bag with delicacies. She was obsessed with the slender child next door and her sick mother. And she wanted to do everything in her power to support them. Walking to her neighbor's house, Jody thought, it wouldn't hurt me to help them in any way I can. Thanks to Jody, Albert and Betty were able to eat a proper lunch today and express their gratitude in silence. In a private talk, Albert revealed that he had come from another state with his mother and sister in order to start over and break away from their alcoholic father, who had spent the family's little funds on drink. As a result of her difficult upbringing, Albert's mother was forced to work several jobs, which caused her to get unwell and battle to recover her health. As Betty enjoyed the snacks that Jody had brought, she spoke about how the doctors have told her that her mother requires surgery but that they simply do not have the financing for it. If I weren't in charge of my mom and sister, I would get a job that pays enough to pay for the operation and give us a good life, Albert continued. His voice quivering with passion. A wave of empathy washed over Jody all of a sudden. For a long time, she had thought she was in the worst possible situation, oblivious to the fact that those around her were also going through tough times. What do you think? I believe I can be of assistance to you, Jody responded her mind already working on a plan. Jody decided not to reveal her strategy just yet, but Albert stared at her hopeful. The following morning, Jody went to see Mr. Butler and begged for a loan to pay for the surgery that Betty and Albert's mom needed. She was visibly upset as she did so. She committed to paying back the debt with half of her monthly paycheck, which includes overtime and tips. After a moment of careful listening, Mr. Butler responded, Absolutely. I will assist this unfortunate woman. I may have to assist myself someday. I'm not as young when I once was. Because I am in a position to do so financially, I will tell the manager to deposit the money into the clinic's account. 
As a result of her generosity, Mr. Butler was moved to tears, and Jody's expression of thanks was overwhelming. She was surprised to hear good news and hurried to tell Albert and his younger sister as soon as her shift ended. It was clear that they were grieving when they welcomed her. Betty whispered, Mama is sick and has to be taken to the hospital. She did her best to contain her tears. The operation can go ahead because I tracked down the funding. Rest assured, everything will be okay. We will rescue your mother, Jody told them, realizing that she had to move swiftly. Thankfully, she received a speedy response from Mr. Butler's business manager, and the funds were transferred to the clinic the following morning. Thankfully, Albert's mom had surgery at the last possible moment, which saved her life. While their mother was healing, Albert and Betty remained by her side, taking comfort in the fact that her face was starting to look normal again. Albert wanted to personally thank the philanthropist who had funded the operation once the woman had recovered. He had gotten the donor's name from Jody. After dropping Jody off at Mr. Butler's office, he headed to the restaurant. But Albert's face altered and he went pale as he opened the door and noticed the restaurant owner seated at the table. Young man, is something wrong with you? Incredulous, Mr. Butler inquired. Albert stumbled, I think I've seen you somewhere before. Yes, in a photo that my mum handed me prior to her hospitalization. Look for yourself here. From his pocket, he withdrew a picture, the corners torn and frayed. The proprietor of the restaurant had paled by now and was holding his heart. It was a picture of the young Howard Butler holding his bride on their wedding day. Just before Amy ran away from her parents' house years ago, this picture disappeared from the family's archives. No, it's not possible. This is not credible. Boy, what is your mother's name? Mr. Butler questioned, coming to terms with his first amazement at last. My mother's name is Amy, Albert retorted feeling that his response might somehow affect his destiny. Jody covered her eyes with her hands when she gasped in shock and watched in shock as Mr. Butler approached the confused child and gave him a firm hug. Albert didn't understand Amy and his mother were the same person until he heard Howard Butler's daughter's whole story. Finally, all questions were answered when Mr. Butler paid Amy a visit in the hospital. The old guy, kneeling at the head of his daughter's bed, said, Oh my God, honey, it's been such a long time. Tears filled Amy's eyes as soon as she recognized her father. With Jody, Betty, and Albert standing by, they started to seek each other for forgiveness. Overcome by the years of separation, Howard Butler demonstrated the unpredictable nature of life by hiring an orphan girl who would eventually lead to his reunion with his own family and the birth of two grandkids. To the delight of Amy and Mr. Butler, Jody and Albert eventually got married after being drawn together by their shared tribulations. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.